Hey, it's Craig. I just wanted to let you know that you can listen to Canadian History X early and ad-free on Amazon Music, included with Prime. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. I'm not going to do my usual spiel that I say at the beginning of most episodes. I'm going to be talking a bit about something a bit more personal, and it relates to my puppy, Boris. Over the past month, I've noticed that his breathing has become a bit different. It's raspy, he's a bit out of breath more, and he tends to hack up his food a bit more while eating. So I took him to the vet, and I found that he has a uh, condition called laryngeal paralysis, which is the first stage of a neurological disease that's similar to ALS in humans. But thankfully, that's slow moving, and it's not really a concern until well down the road. But what is a concern now is the paralysis, and this is caused when abductor muscles in the larynx are not working properly, and they're not expanding and opening for a deep breath. And so it's not a horrible condition initially, but it does mean that generally he would have one to three years left um or in some cases in more extreme cases dogs only have a few months so i'm looking to raise some money for his surgery uh, it costs five thousand dollars which is not cheap and well beyond what i can afford so i've organized a gofundme you don't have to to donate if you can even just share it i would appreciate it i just would like to get a few extra years with my dog a bit of cool news my other podcast canadian history x is up for a canada podcasting award in the category of society and culture so to vote you need to be a podcaster so if you are a podcaster and you enjoy my shows i would truly appreciate it if you could give me a vote the link to vote will be in my show notes and thanks again Among the list of great Canadian athletes, we tend to focus a bit too much on hockey players. The truth is, Canada has had many amazing athletes, and today I am looking at one of them, Tom Longboat. Tom Longboat was born on the Six Nations Reserve on June 4, 1886, to a family deep in poverty who ran a small farm. His name at birth was Gagway, which means everything. When he was three, his father George died. But as a child, Longboat would often run around the area, once stating that he ran 65 kilometers from Hamilton to Brantford, arriving home before his mother, who had left hours earlier in a wagon. The Haudenosaunee were known for long-distance running, with runners carrying messages and strained wampum to signify their distinct and recognized role as a part of the diplomatic protocol between indigenous groups. When he was 12, Longboat was forced to attend residential school, he hated the school where he was pressured to give up his traditional beliefs in favor of Christianity. He was also told he could not speak his own language. He would attempt two escapes, with the second one being more successful. His uncle would hide him from the authorities who were searching for him. Longboat became interested in running when he was 15 after Bill Davis, a fellow resident of his reserve, finished second in the Boston Marathon. In 1905, Longboat began to race taking second in his first race at Caledonia, Ontario. In 1906, he won his first major race where he took first place in the Around the Bay Road race, winning by over three minutes. The Herald wrote, quote, Marsh was the pacemaker in the early part of the race, but right behind him was Longboat, who occasionally shot to the front just to test his speed. They alternated as pacemakers until the Stone Road Junction was reached, when Longboat decided that the time had come for him to cut loose. He left Marsh as if he had been standing, end quote. He would begin training with Bill Davis, the man who inspired him around this time. In 1907, Longboat traveled to Boston to take part in the Boston Marathon. He would finish with a record time of 2 hours, 24 minutes, and 24 seconds, which was almost 5 minutes faster than the previous 10 winners of the event. He was also the first Indigenous person to win the race, and remains one of only two Indigenous to have ever won it. The Ottawa Citizen reported on the win, stating, quote, Longboat running as steadily as if on a practice canter, his long legs eating up yards at every step, was given a terrific reception as he breasted the tape. He was the favorite and many bets were placed on him at even money. All the Canadians, nevertheless, made credible showings, end quote. The Americans began to accuse Longboat of being aided by performance-enhancing drugs called jobbing at the time. 
The Montreal Gazette wrote, quote, The people have liked to see an Indian win. There may be superior folk who think it is no great thing to be a champion runner or football player or oarsman, but the popular vote is against them. We glory in our athletes in this northern clime. End quote. As Longboat journeyed back to Canada, the newspapers reported on his journey. The Ottawa citizen would at one point state that as Longboat crossed at Niagara, he made his manager tip his hat to the Canadian flag. When he returned home to Canada, 200,000 people were part of a celebration in Toronto for him. Around this time, Longboat had become a celebrity across North America. As the Olympics arrived in 1908, Longboat was the favorite to win the race. William Foran, a Canadian Athlete Federation official, would state, quote, Tom Longboat will start in the Olympic Marathon, and Tom Longboat will win, end quote. Prior to even going to the Olympics, the American team protested Longboat's attendance, stating he was not an amateur. The Toronto Evening Telegram stated, quote, Canada is being quite sufficiently sacrificed to the old country craze for pleasing the Yankees at all cost. If this craze is to be carried out of diplomacy into sport, and Longboat is to be disqualified, and every Canadian athlete owes it to his country to leave the Olympian Games. End quote. Even though he competed, Longbow would suffer difficulties in the race. Longbow would be one of several competitors who collapsed during the race. Even the man who did win the race was suffering from extreme dehydration and fatigue. More than half the competitors did not even finish the race, collapsing from sunstroke as Longbow did. A rematch was organized at Madison Square Garden the same year. The Montreal Gazette reported on the frenzy to see the race, stating, quote, No consideration was shown by the frantic mob that stormed the entrance of Madison Avenue. Women were tossed about, crushed and battered in the maelstrom of struggling men who were fighting one another in a desperate attempt to get past the barriers. So great was the crush that the squad of police that tried to stem the onslaught was shoved aside in the swirling eddy of humanity, and the bluecoats were helpless, end quote. Running against Orlando Petrie, the man who won the marathon at the Olympics but had been disqualified because he fell and was helped up by umpires, Longboat dominated. The Montreal Gazette continues stating, quote, The scene that followed Durando's dramatic failure in the London Stadium was nothing to what we witnessed in Madison Square Garden last night. He tried to struggle to his feet but failed. He was carried to his dressing room where he was soon revived. In the meantime, Longboat shot around the track in the sprint pace and as the yells and Indian whoops cracked one's eardrums, he galloped in the winner. End quote. Following the race, Longboat chose to go professional. In 1908, he married Lorette Maracle. I want to talk about the local history atlas. This was created by one of my listeners, Ben Woodward, and it's fantastic. It's this wonderful website where you can see a, a Google Maps image of Canada, and you can visit all of the places in Canada and within these places are my local history podcast episodes that you can listen to. And one of the great things about it is you can add to it. You can put your own pictures in, you can put your own information. It's creating this wonderful historical mosaic of Canada and it's a wonderful website. Uh, I have the link in my show notes, but if you also want to visit yourself, it's atlas.digitalhistory.ca. And we can create this wonderful mosaic of Canada's history. All of us, you can learn about Canada's history. If you're going on a road trip, you can use this wonderful site to see where you're going and the amazing things that you can see. So be sure to check it out. In 1909, Longboat became the professional champion of the world by dominating races throughout the year. Through his races, the Montreal Star would publish hour-by-hour, mile-by-mile bulletins of his races outside their offices. In Toronto, police would stop him from taking part in races because spectators jammed traffic in the business section to see him. But throughout his career, Longboat was often the target of racism from the press. This was especially shown in how Longboat prepared for his runs. He would develop a method of having hard workouts followed by active rest such as long walks. These recovery periods annoyed his promoters and the press would call Longboat lazy. Longboat's alteration of hard, easy and recovery days is now norm for training among runners. Eventually though, Longboat would buy out his contract due to the complaints of his managers for his running methods. The press stated that since he was indigenous, he would not be able to handle his own money or the proper training regime. 
Tom Flanagan, the man who had taken over his training after the Boston Marathon, would state, quote, He was all right until he started to make money. There were times when he did not feel like running, when he refused to train properly, and just generally went prima donna on me. End quote. The truth was that Longboat was using a method of training that was revolutionary for the time. Of course, once he took matters into his own hands, his times began to improve as he was free to use his own training methods. Unfortunately, after 1909, back and knee problems began to impact his running. And while it is common knowledge that he had these issues, the press blamed his, quote, Indian laziness, end quote. Tom Flanagan, the former manager of Longboat, then began to spread rumors that Longboat did not train much, which further pushed the press to attack him. In 1911, Longboat was arrested for drunkenness, which was widely quoted in the press with many columnists writing about his supposed alcoholism. In truth, his racing career and post-athletic work cast a lot of doubt on the stories of alcoholism, and the claims are largely unfounded beyond this arrest. There have been claims that the temperance movement was behind some of the reporting. Even with the negative press around him, Longboat was still able to win two major races only a month after his arrest. In 1912, he ran 15 miles in one hour and 18 minutes, seven minutes faster than his amateur record. Longboat's running ability was legendary, and there is one story of how his own family did not believe how fast he could run over a long distance. To prove it to them, he gave his brother a half-hour head start with a horse and buggy, while Longboat would run on foot to see who could make it to Hamilton first. In that race, with his brother, Longboat won. In his time as an amateur runner, he lost only three races, one of which was his first race. When he turned professional, he had two national track records and several unofficial world records. As his fame rose, Longboat was asked to speak at the residential school he was forced to attend as a child. Longboat would say, quote, I wouldn't even send my dog to that place, end quote. When the First World War began, Longboat enlisted to serve overseas. The North Bay Nugget reported that Longboat was initially denied because he was married, but this was overturned. Serving as a dispatch runner, he would also run in races in France, including winning the Canadian Corps Dominion Day competition in 1918. He would also be promoted to the rank of Lance Corporal in 1916. During the war, he was twice wounded and twice declared dead. The Ottawa Journal reported on October 15, 1917, quote, Word is received here from Tom Daly, former trainer of the Tecumseh Lacrosse Club and Toronto Baseball Club, who went overseas with the Sportsman Battalion, that Tom Longboat, the famous Indian marathon runner, has been killed in action. End quote. One story stated that he entered a communication trench which was buried by a shell, trapping him and a few others for six days before they were rescued. In 1919, Longboat stated to Lou Marsh that the story was not true. While he was serving overseas, a vaudeville comedian named Edgar Laplante began to travel around the United States pretending to be him and giving concerts, profiting off of Longboat's fame. In August 1917, Laplante, using Longboat's name, enlisted as a civilian crewman with the U.S. Army Transport Service. This made news around the United States, which often included a photo of Laplante, who looked nothing like Longboat. Some newspapers questioned who the real longboat was, the one serving for the United States or the one serving for Canada. Most newspapers sided with the imposter. The Vancouver province wrote, quote, The Tom Longboat Faker has sprung into notoriety again. This time he has, according to the latest information, joined the United States Transport Service. The bogus longboat is evidently the same individual who worked the trick in California until exposed. One thing to the faker's credit is that he is persistent, end quote. Eventually, Longboat heard about the imposter, and he wrote a letter threatening legal action, which was published in many newspapers. He would state, quote, I'm going to have three charges against this man. One, for making false statements. Second, for impersonation. Third, for intent to defraud the public at large, end quote. Even when false reports of Longboat's death were circulated, newspapers in the United States ran with photos of the imposter, not Longboat. Longboat's wife, believing him to be dead, remarried, but after finding out that Longboat was alive, stated that she did not want to leave her new husband. Eventually, Longboat would later marry Martha Silversmith, with whom he had four children. After the war, Longboat officially retired from running professionally. During his running career, it's estimated he made $17,000, amounting to about three hundred dollars to $400,000 today. 
Over the course of the rest of his life, he would take on various jobs before he settled in Toronto with his family, where he worked until 1944 in the street cleaning department. Throughout his later life, he would also help other runners by giving them advice. The Windsor Star reported, quote, His advice was something to be sought and his wide experience helped many young men in the marathon field. His great bit of advice was to save strength at the beginning of a race and use it in the finish. End quote. After he retired from work, he moved back to the Six Nations Reserve where he died of pneumonia on January 9, 1949. The Calgary Albertans stated, quote, The courageous Indian brought many running titles to Canada and made Ontario running mad. It is said the parks and back lanes of the Ontario capital were cluttered with aspiring youngsters whose ambition was to become his successor. End quote. The Windsor Star wrote, quote, To Canadians born around the turn of the century, or a little later, the name Tom Longboat meant as much as Babe Ruth did in a later era. End quote. Alfred Shrub, the main rival of Longboat during his career, stated, quote, He was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, marathon runner of all time. End quote. When Longboat was buried, he was buried with new moccasins on his feet, while from head to toe he was clothed in new cotton and woolen garments crafted by his family. Even after his death, Longboat was still met with racism in the press. On February 4, 1956, McLean's wrote, quote, He hated to train and he was a fool with his money, but for half a dozen dazzling years this Canadian Indian could run farther, faster than any man alive. His downfall was just as swift, end quote. In 1951, the Tom Longboat Awards were created and given to an outstanding Indigenous athlete in Canada in each province. In 1955, Longboat was inducted into Canada Sports Hall of Fame, followed by the Ontario Sports Hall of Fame and the Indian Hall of Fame. In 1976, he was designated as a National Historic Person. In 2000, a stamp was issued by Canada Post to honour Longboat. In 2013, Tom Longboat Lane was opened in Toronto, and that same year, June 4th, was declared to be Tom Longboat Day in Ontario. In 2018, a Google Doodle was created to celebrate his life, which made national news across Canada. Longboat started running in his teens after fleeing a residential school to live with his uncle. He easily won his first Boston Marathon in 1907, destroying the previous record by five minutes in a snowstorm, no less. After turning pro, he won race after race, becoming one of the most famous and respected Indigenous people of his day. His greatest rival, British runner Alfred Shrub, called him one of the greatest, if not the greatest, marathoner of all time. He was even a hero of the First World War. Today, we visited the school in Toronto that bears his name as kids celebrated Tom Longboat Day. Tom Longboat was famous and it this school just represents him in, to keep him like going through generations. In relay, I had to like experience what he like how he ran, and how, like how did he do it? I learned that he was like a messenger during World War One, and he his family's kind of like complicated. Where he when he went to World War One, his wife thought he might have died, so he she married someone else, so he got a new wife when he came back. It all worked out in the end. Longboat settled in Toronto after the war until he retired to the Six Nations Reserve in 1944. His legacy secured. In 2022, possibly the biggest honour for a Canadian occurred when a heritage minute was made about Longboat. I am God Clegg. My name means everything. Tom Longboat! I am Wolf Clan, Onondaga Nation. I've run many different races. I've run to survive and to be free. I've run to win for honor. His people might be lazy, but this one's damn fast. My people respected our runners, people who carried important messages from village to village. I need a guide to the next post. Dispatch carrier, sir. I can get you there. God's sakes, man. Slow down. Who do you think I am, Tom Longboat? No, sir. I am. Running makes me feel alive. It's everything. 
Tom Lombo was the first indigenous person to win the Boston Marathon. He ran his way to international fame and became an inspiration to generations of athletes. In 1998, when McLean's was doing up its list of the greatest stars of the 20th century for Canada, Tom Longboat finished first, ahead of people such as Wayne Gretzky, Lauren Michaels, Mary Pickford, and Celine Dion. I hope you enjoyed that episode and my look at Tom Longboat. If you did, please leave a rating and review. If you like, you can email me at craig at canadaehx.com. You can find me on Twitter. My handle is Craig Baird, C-R-A-I-G-B-A-I-R-D, and I'm on Instagram at Bairdo37. As well, again, if you want to support the podcast, you can for as little as $3 a month. Just go to patreon.com slash CanadaEHX. And you can donate to the podcast by going to CanadaEHX.com and clicking donate. And I also want to thank all of my wonderful patrons. And I apologize if I get any names incorrect. Sarah White, Tom McMillan, Mike Sullivan, Wendy Mills, Keelan Prignitz, Michael Matthews, Joanna Parker, Jeff Dahl, Vobs, Robert Page, Richard T., Colin Johnson, Jeff Hershey, Kyle Murray, Steve Pakin, Matthew Gartho, Lionel Romaine, Dr. Bob Turner, Randy Hayden, Doug Campbell, Reg W., Deborah Carlson, Francis Helbling, Nixon Ree, Shannon Marshall, Clinton Martinez, Dimitri Chauve, Aaron O'Hara Myers, Robert Dunseith, Todd Casey, Catherine Roy, Luke S., J.P. Bear, Jason Hall, Phil Maynard, and Iris Gray. Information from Canadian Encyclopedia, McLean's Library and Archives Canada, Wikipedia, Ottawa Journal, Montreal Gazette, Vancouver Daily World, North Bay Nugget, Vancouver Province, Windsor Star, and the Calgary Albertan. Thanks, and we'll see you again next time.